Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. The nerfs have arrived. This is like the second best part of Hearthstone. The best part is obviously we get new expansion content, and the second best part is we get a lot of significant and impactful nerfs. Because while we don't get a whole new expansion as a new experience in Hearthstone, we get a new, like, experience of actually playing Hearthstone. People drastically change the decks that they play, which means you drastically also change the decks your opponent is playing. So the whole Hearthstone ranked experience is going to be new and fresh, at least for a while. And with the next expansion probably coming up in a few months, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I have to say Hearthstone, this expansion has been very good on all accounts, except for possibly Standard Ladder. And this might change up things just enough to where people have a lot of fun playing it. And I know there's some skepticism to that and some of these nerfs, but let's go through it and give you guys my perspective. And before that, I do want to assure you guys, uh, I am pretty well versed with the current situation in Standard and in Wild. I've been playing Standard for about a week, just trying to figure out what works, what people are playing, how these things interact with one another. I got Legend in Wild this month as well. And you'd be surprised just how many Standard decks with like two cards different are actually in Wild. So there's a lot of this stuff being played everywhere in Hearthstone. And I can kind of see and agree with most of these nerfs. So what's on the menu here? We got Bone Mare is going from a 7 mana 5-5 five five to an 8 mana 5-5. Five five. A 1 mana difference in a card is uh, typically significant, but not significant enough to kill the card. We've seen examples of Gadgets and Auctioneer and Leroy in the past that have received a mana increase and continued to see play, though often not immediately. They are not cards that get completely obliterated, and I would say increasing the mana cost of a card, the more mana the card originally cost, the less impactful the nerf is. So this is actually a pretty fair nerf. I think the only card that received a a slightly higher mana cost increase was Scenario. Scenario was originally 8 mana, it went to 9, and funny enough that kind of killed the card because Druid couldn't really do anything with 1 mana left over on turn 10 rather than 2 mana left over on turn 10, but I don't see that as a problem with Bone Mare. Bone Mare is typically played as kind of like the last or second last thing in your hand when you're playing an aggressive or mid-range deck. And it does come out one turn later, so that does make the card worse, and that does make those decks a little bit worse. That's very important to realize, but I think when it comes to like arena formats, it's honestly almost as good, like almost the same thing. This card's almost the same thing as far as arena is considered, and I'm pretty glad that it did get nerfed for the sake of Arena. I had a list of 10 cards that I wanted to see absolutely banned from Arena. We saw like two or three of those Death Knights banned. We saw a few of the other cards banned. We saw a few of the other cards get occurrence reductions. And now we see another card off that list, Bone Mare, is getting nerfed. So man, am I happy I made that video because it certainly seems to seems to indicate that a lot of us players know what's actually good for the game and what we actually want. So, next up, we got Corridor Creeper going from a 7 mana, uh, it's going from a 0 mana 5-5 five five to a 0 mana 2-5. Uh, so, that is a gigantic nerf. Corridor Creeper was played usually after a very efficient trading uh, scenario from your opponent. At least, I was playing because I don't play very much of this card in ladder. But, um, it was also played when your opponent had a very powerful board clear effect. They just drop that zero mana gigantic minion or two of them. And it's typically played in a scenario where uh, you or your opponent is, is doing like a crushing play. So you do a crushing play and then the game is just over because after the crushing play you get like, you know, zero mana tons of stats. And that's why the card is really busted. But more than that, this card was just everywhere. You think this card is everywhere in Standard. This card is also everywhere in Wild. This card was just everywhere. We had a, a neutral minion in decks that it had no place being in just because of its crazy high power level. So the fact that they nerfed it is amazing. The fact that they obliterated the card is also pretty amazing. Um, I think the card is not completely dead. It might be dead for a while. Typically what happens when cards get nerfed is people overreact with the amount that they get nerfed, even though this card looks like it got absolutely dumped on. And thank you, Blizzard, for doing that, by the way. Um, I think it's a card that will return if it's still in the standard format or the wild format, I guess, uh, if there are decks out there that are viable playing tons and tons and tons of tokens. 
Uh, I think if you can reliably get this down to like 0 to 2 mana, it's still a very good tempo card. And while it probably won't see play for the near future, don't count this card out, but still disenchant it. You should disenchant every single one of the cards you see nerfed, even though you like it, even though you might consider playing it at a later time. You can just craft it for the same amount that you're disenchanting it when the nerf patch is out, not before. Don't disenchant this card after you see this video. That would be a dumb thing to do. So, Corridor Creeper, pretty nerfed. Another aspect is this card, along with previously nerfed card Bone Mare, uh, they belong typically in the same deck, and that makes that type of deck, that group of decks, significantly weaker, but that is the type of decks that I think a lot of us have grown to dislike, which is kind of like the neutral zoo package that just goes with every single class and plays exactly the same way every time. How about our next nerf? We have Patches! Oh my god, it finally happened. Patches is going from a charging 1 mana 1 1 to a not charging 1 mana 1 1. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, but this is a very important nerf. The reason this nerf is so important is illustrated in the fact that some decks were playing Patches with absolute trash tier pirates just because of patches. So think about that. If people were playing like a 1 mana 1 2 just to get patches out on turn 1 and getting that 1 mana 2 3 with partial charge across multiple minions to fuel their corridor creepers, you know, that was just crazy high power level and the reason Blizzard had to nerf this card is so they could actually make pirates in the future. Think about that. If people were playing garbage pirates just to get patches from their deck, what if, what if Blizzard actually wants to make half-decent pirate cards? Well, it probably won't be able to, because this card is just never going to go away. Well, now, yeah, it's kind of going to go away a little bit. Um, I think Patches is going from a card that just belongs in just about every single deck to a card that belongs probably pretty well-fit in a pirate-filled deck. So if you think about it, a lot of decks that were running Patches were running just the South Sea Captains, some an extra couple pirates, but if you just had the Captains, you're looking at a roughly, I know Mulligan odds change that, roughly a 1 in 3 chance that you would draw Patches before the other pirate, which would be a really bad scenario. And of course, if it doesn't have charge, it'll be an even worse scenario moving forward. But if you have a deck with like 8 or 10 pirates, the chance that you get patches before like any other pirate is significantly lower. So uh, patches is still going to be a, a good card in a pirate deck. It's not going to break the game and honestly will help the pirate archetype. Uh, aside from Pirate Warrior, which was its own problem, we haven't really seen much of a pirate themed deck outside of, oh hey, patches is here. A few other things. Uh, you guys know when patches, uh, you know, is drawn, played, or pulled from your deck, he goes, I'm charge, right? So we get the, that aspect, but he's not going to have charge. So, you know, this great dilemma had to be answered, and uh, we had a dev reply from Mike Donay here. We found an extra voice line for patches we're swapping out with the charge line. Well, thank you. Cool. We'll have a fully immersed new terrible version of patches after the next patch. And another concern here um, with the over nerf, um, this is by far the most popular comment in the official thread regarding these nerfs. I have that below if you want to see it. Should have given patches Battlecry charge so players don't get screwed by drawing him. Well, I absolutely agree from a balanced perspective, but I don't disagree with absolutely annihilating the viability of patches. So it's kind of like a situation where I both agree but also disagree. I think Blizzard does the right thing in this spot by absolutely destroying the viability of patches and allowing them to actually make good pirate cards. The better patches is, the worse pirate cards they have to make in the future, and that is a big deal in this. Then we have Raz of the Chained. How about that? If your deck has no duplicates, your hero power goes from 0 to 1. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, it makes the uh, very commonly known one of combo priest, Razakas priest, or as wild players like to call it, Reno combo priest, because they actually have Reno in wild format, uh, from a god tier deck, best deck in standard, best deck in wild, to 
Probably not the best deck in Standard or Wild, but it's still going to be pretty good, I think. Um, if you really think about it, yeah, you're not going to be able to play those, like, you know, 40 damage combos. You're not going to be able to do crazy Velen combos anymore. So the burst is significantly lower rather than taking, like, one turn or sometimes two turns after you play uh, Shadow Reaper Anduin to kill your opponent, typically with some very savage combos, you're going to need an extra turn or two. However, what you have to consider is, I remember playing against Razaka's Priest early on when players didn't fully realize the potential of the combo, and in those early days, a lot of those players just fought for board control using their new Priest refreshing hero power. And in doing so, they were typically able to stall out the game. So my point is, while yes, um, you know, Razakra's Priest won't be able to just completely slam you like a couple turns after doing Shadow Reaper with a Raza previously played in the game. They'll still do extremely well if they match up those two cards together. And while it might take them an extra couple of turns to kill you, they will have a gigantic advantage over the board and the game through those turns. So unless you're playing kind of like uh, an aggro deck with lots of spell finishers, or unless you're playing a combo deck and you just need an extra turn or two to beat Rizakas, the outcome is still going to be largely the same. Now, people obviously play those decks, which obviously makes the deck considerably worse, so I don't believe Rizakas Priest will continue to be a tier 1 deck in either Standard or Wild, but I don't think it'll be not viable. So I think it'll still be pretty decent. I think it'll still be seeing some play, especially from people who really like the deck, and there's certainly a few of those. Now, how does all of this shape up? Because it's a pretty interesting question how all these changes stack up. And the main criticism actually have come from that question. A lot of people believe that Cube Lock, currently the only considered tier one deck in the meta right now that is completely unaffected by these card changes, they believe that this deck is absolutely going to dominate. And... Yes, it's hard to disagree with that, but I think there is another aspect to this that some people are overlooking heavily. So what are going to be the other tier 1 decks, you know? That seems like a mystery, but it's probably not. Q-Block is going to guide us there, but then what decks counter Q-Block and how how much of those decks is going away in terms of power level with these nerfs? So, took a look at it. We have uh, Quest Rogue is actually a very good deck against uh, against Q Block. It's just very fast. And if you look at the deck list, it is largely unaffected. Of course, it's affected by the change with Patches, but Patches was not a pivotal part of the deck. It certainly helps because it gives you another uh, cheap charge minion. You can constantly bounce to kill your opponent, but it's a very light nerf. It's a very light nerf to a deck that does extremely well against Q block and generally struggles a little bit against other fast decks, which, well, those are getting absolutely crapped on. So uh, Quest Rogue is probably going to come back, guys. Uh, it's going to be a decent meta deck. I think it's going to be uh, probably still tier 2, but it's going to be near the top of tier 2. The reason I don't think it's going to be tier 1 is because of my next recommendation here. And this is, again, these decks are off Tempo Storm. Um, this is the current Tempo Mage. This is considered a tier 2 deck, but I've played against this deck a lot, and I think it's very high up in the tier 2 decks. And uh, again, it has that same thing. It kind of gets out aggroed, but so many of these aggro decks are going to be going away. This deck is just ridiculous against other slow decks. It's unbelievable against slow decks. And it's also unbelievable against Q Block. And you know what else? It's actually really good against, well, the other deck. It's really good against Quest Rogue. So um, actually... Um, Tempo Mage might be the new meta deck, and uh, that makes things pretty interesting. I think this little group of three decks has some wiggle room. I think it's possible that combo decks, it's possible that mid-range decks can get in between here. Like, honestly, I think like a mid-range Paladin with lots of board clears and healing can probably do pretty well against those three. These are like unheard of decks, so I think it's going to be a pretty cool meta. I think there is some wiggle room for new decks to come into the meta and possibly thrive. So we'll see. Hope you guys are as excited as I am about the balance changes that are coming up. And yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I think we're going to have a, a pretty good age in Hearthstone coming up. <laughs>